کنفرانس استوکهلم حمله به اشرف قیام ها در منطقه و ایران مسئولیت های کشورهای نوردیک سوئد، نروژ، دانمارک، فنلاند و ایسلند هانسهم اردی بهشت 1390 پنجم می 2011 Ladies and gentlemen, I send my greetings and thank the friends of a free Iran committee in the Swedish parliament for its initiative in holding this session. I also thank the 106 Swedish lawmakers for their invaluable declaration in the parliament. You have gathered today at a time when the bodies of 35 Ashraf martyrs of the April 8 massacre have not yet been buried. The Iraqi forces have occupied Ashraf cemetery and are not allowing their burial. Many of the 345 wounded in the attack remain in critical condition their medical treatment is being denied by the Iraqi government. The Iraqi government has kept the gates of Ashraf closed to journalists, lawyers, international observers, and families of the residents. The fate of the martyrs and those wounded also demonstrate the dimensions of this atrocity. I want to refer to one of the martyrs, a passionate, courageous, open-minded, and selfless woman, Saba Haftbaradaran, who had been wounded but could have easily been saved. In her last moments, Saba, who could hardly breathe, said, we are standing to the end. And I ask, who in the world is going to respond to Saba's cry? I also want to tell you, distinguished Swedish parliamentarians and personalities about Hanif Kafai. He was educated in Stockholm and a Swedish citizen. He was a brave young man, passionate for Iran's freedom. He died by a bullet. So I ask, for which crime was he murdered? Dear friends, Arab Spring, the popular uprisings in Iran and in the region, and the infighting at the top of the regime in recent days made clear why the mullahs needed to attack Ashraf. After assessing what happened during the uprisings, the mullahs recognized the impact of the mujahideen on them. By carrying out this assault, they wanted to eliminate the only effective and democratic solution for the future Iran. For this reason, the mullah's senior officials openly praised the massacre, their representatives. Is Sweden responsible for an incident that happened thousands of kilometers away from its soil? The answer is definitely yes. First, Sweden is known for its key role in promoting human rights and democracy in the world. You, as the representatives 
of Swedish people can do a lot to resolve the humanitarian issue of Ashraf. Second, because Sweden is an important member of the European Union, which has to remain committed to the sensitive situation in the Middle East. And third, because Sweden has committed itself to international treaties, such as the universal principle of the uh, responsibility to protect R2P in preventing war crimes and crimes against humanity. As such, I ask on behalf of the Iranian resistance, first, the European Union, especially the Swedish government and parliament, to undertake an international initiative to guarantee the protection of Camp Ashraf by the United Nations. To this end, I emphasize the need for the UN Secretary General and the Security Council to adopt a resolution on the protection of the defenseless and besieged residents of Ashraf. Second, we demand an impartial, independent, full and transparent investigation into the April 8 massacre and insist on the appointment of a Security Council representative to conduct such an investigation. And third, we call on the Swedish government and all EU member states to recognize the Iranian people's resistance that seeks to change the religious dictatorship ruling Iran. I thank you all in advance for your efforts.